New day, new morn. Once again, I am Joran Spence Kasupang, and I welcome you to the third week of the DOST Scholarship Online Review. Now, we are going to tackle the mechanical and technical subtests. In these subtests, we will be performing tasks that will measure your ability to acquire information about everyday physics and to comprehend the mechanical relationships. It consists of mechanical and electrical problems as well as items that deals with physical forces. In this tutorial, we are going to have a game called Who Wants to Have a Scholarship? This is just like the usual game of Who Wants to Have a Millionaire, but with some modifications. These modifications are most of the problems have no choices. This tutorial will only have 10 problems. Lifelines will be just call a friend, pause the video, and lastly, rewatch the video. Now you know this all, let's all start the tutorial. is a crate is sitting on the center of a flatbed truck as the truck accelerates to the east the crate moves with it not sliding on the bed of the truck in what direction is the force exerted by the bed of the truck on the crate well to answer this it's very simple you just have to learn or understand what is force. Force is a function of mass and acceleration. And acceleration is a vector quantity, making force also a vector quantity. Knowing that mass is just a scalar quantity, we will get the direction of the force from the direction of the acceleration. And so let's go back to the problem. It states here that as the truck accelerates to the east, that means the acceleration is going to the east. This also means the direction of the force is going east. Now for the next problem. How can gears be used to change the speed of a machine? Well, one of the most easiest way to understand this question is if you imagine changing gears on a 10 speed bicycle using different sides of gears the speed changes to give justice for watching that not so good looking guy let me expound more about this stuff the reason why speed changes with different sides of gears is because of rotation per minute and tip velocity tip velocity is the velocity at the tip of a gear the rule is as you increase the size of a gear, the tip velocity also increases with respect to the rotation per minute. So if we say two gears have the same rotations per minute, the bigger gear has the faster tip velocity. But if we place them both in a chain, or if we let these gears connect with each other, that is called tip velocity makes the rotation per minute change too. This makes the smaller gears rotate faster than the bigger gear. For the next problem, choose the most closely related tool or object for the tool given. Is it this, this, or this, or maybe this? Well, the picture that I have given to you is actually a socket wrench. From the chosen given, a hex head bolt which is tightened and loosened by the socket wrench is more relative than others. For the next problem, in the figure shown, gears A, B, and C are connected by a chain. The diameters of the gears are 2, 4, and 8 inches respectively. If gear A is turning at the 20 revolutions per minute, what is the turning rate of gear C? Sorry for 
for the technical difficulties but it seems like I am the one who will explain this problem for you. Because of our previous question, we now know the basic concept for this problem. Now let's apply it. We know all of them are connected by a chain. So we can say that gear C's turning rate is lower than gear A. And also, by computing, we got that the diameter of gear C is 4 times larger than gear A. This means that the turning rate of gear C is 4 times lower than gear A, arriving at an answer of 5 RPM. And for our next, you're playing with a ball on an uneven surface as shown in the figure. If the ball moves from point A to point B across the surface, what is the difference between the gravitational potential energy at point A and point B? that wonderful question myself. In this problem, we will tackle about what is gravitational potential energy. It is actually a function of gravitational acceleration, mass, and height. In this problem, the mass is from the ball. Gravitational acceleration is due to gravity and height varies in position. Because mass and acceleration is the same no matter what position, gravitational potential energy differs in its height. Since point A is located at a point higher than point B, we can say that the potential energy at point A is greater at point B. This is the answer for this problem. Now let's move on. These pictures shows pairs of metal blocks and their temperature. Which of these correctly shows the different direction that heat energy will move? So we know that heat flows from hot to cold objects. When a hot and cold body are in thermal contact, they exchange heat energy until they reach thermal equilibrium. With the hot body cooling down and the cold body warming up. So let's go back to our pictures once again. We just have to see which block is hotter and colder and if the hotter block is giving heat to the colder block. So let's examine this first picture. A 20 degrees block is giving heat to the 70 degrees block. Knowing that 20 degrees is colder than 70 degrees, it cannot give heat to the 70 degrees block. This, this means that this is not the answer. Let's move on to the next picture. A 50 degrees block is giving heat to a 100 degrees block. Once again, 50 degrees is colder than 100 degrees. So, it cannot give heat to the 100 degrees block. Making this picture incorrect. Let's move on to the next picture. An 80 degrees block is giving heat to a 30 degrees block. Knowing that 80 degrees is hotter than 30 degrees. That means it can give heat to a 30 degrees block. This means that this picture is correct. And this is actually the answer. But then, then again, let's move on to the next picture. A 100 degrees block is giving heat to another 100 degrees block. Let's go back to our definition once again. When a hot and cold body are in thermal contact, they exchange heat energy until they reach thermal equilibrium. And what is thermal equilibrium? Thermal equilibrium is actually a term that means that both bodies share the same temperature. Which means that if a body and another body is in contact and are sharing heat but are having the same temperature, this means that they are in thermal equilibrium. And once they reach thermal equilibrium, heat will no longer flow. Thus, this picture is incorrect. Let's move on to the next problem. During your piano recital, a pure musical note 
cause a thin wood panel on the school theater to vibrate with the same frequency. This is an example of overtone, diffraction, resonance, or interference. To actually understand this is that we have to know what are these terms are. That's why let's go back to our handy dandy Mariah. Faith says here that an overtone is one of the higher tones produced simultaneously with the fundamental and that with fundamental comprised as a complex musical tone. So this means that an overtone is a tone over another tone. This is what choirs do. They have different tones to create a very harmonic sound. Next, so let's go to the diffraction. Diffraction is a modification which light attributes especially in passing by the edge of an opaque body or through narrow openings and in which the rays appear to be diffracted. It is also a similar notification to other waves such as sound waves or moving of particles such as electrons. So in this case, if we are talking about sound, diffraction is actually like an echo which is deflected from the source into another medium but it cannot go through. So it undergoes some modification. So let's go to resonance. Resonance is the quality or state of being resonant. A vibration of a large amplitude in a mechanical or electrical system caused by a relatively small periodic stimulus of the same or nearly the same period as the natural vibration period of the system. In a simpler term, this is resonance. This video is actually the perfect example of resonance. The guy giving a tone and the glass is actually resonating on the stone and as you can see because sound is traveling in waves the glass is also creating waves vibrating on itself this is resonating <laughs> now it is my time this version to ask a question different types of blocks are subjected to burning wood if the same amount of heat from the burning wood is absorbed by the rectangular block at a short time interval, which block has the highest top surface, provided that all the blocks have the same dimensions? Is it copper, aluminum, steel, or brick? Because I asked it, I answer it too. This is what this tutorial is all about. Teach to let you know what I know. So to answer this, the material with higher thermal conductivity will have the highest temperature on top of the surface, given that all blocks are introduced to the same amount of heat from the burning wood. From the four materials, copper has the highest thermal conductivity since it is being used as a heating element in most of the devices that produces heat, such as flat iron, electric stove, water heater. Whereas brick has the lowest thermal conductivity among the four materials, since it is being used to dissipate heat in a furnace or a fireplace. Also, aluminum has a higher thermal conductivity compared to steel. Therefore, the answer of this question is copper. So for our next question, you are to construct a water tank with a horizontal exit pipe at the bottom. You want the water to exit the pipe at high speed when the tank is full. Which of the tank beside below should you consider? Is it A, B, C, or D? I think that guy is gone. 
the tutorial take over? So to answer this, we have to know how water could exit the pipe faster. The most simplest way to achieve this is by increasing the pressure. There's a lot of ways to increase the pressure, but in this problem, we have to understand that pressure is a function of force and area. If we assume that all of these tanks have the same volume, we can say that the force will be equal for all tanks. So now, we can say that pressure varies from the area. And because area is inversely proportional to pressure, the smaller the area, the higher the pressure. And what area are we talking about? It is actually the area at the base of the tank and the area of the exit hole. And by examination, tank B has the smallest base area and exit hole among the rest, making tank B the answer for this problem. Ha! Last question. The tool shown would most likely be used for carved woods, drive nails, tighten bolts, or weld metals. Well, this tool is actually called a chisel. It is used to carve the wood. It is prominent because of the wedge tip of this tool has. And wedges usually are used to cut or chip away various materials like wood. And that concludes our tutorial. Hope you learn new things and from now on, start asking how did that work? Thank you for watching and see you next time. We are happy to help you. Peace!